What's up guys? I am back to finally do a requested video from our church members. Everyone has been asking me to do some story time videos and I think the time has come. And I was actually torn as to what topic or situation in my life I wanted to share with you guys first. So I've decided to tell you guys that I was robbed at gunpoint when I was, I think I was 22 years old. It was in 2008. I'm 32 now. So 2008, it's 2017. That's seven plus two which is nine, nine years from my age is what? Uh, 23, right? Or 24? I don't know how old I was. It was a very um, traumatic and I think it was one of the most scariest, what is it the most scary? It was one of the scariest moments in my life. Um, I, I think I've only had about two or three extremely scary moments in my life that were super traumatic and left a mark, you know, in my memory. And the interesting thing is I moved to Philadelphia. It was my first time having my own place in Philadelphia because my previous apartments that I had on my own were always in New Jersey. And so I decided to move to Philadelphia and the area was a pretty nice area. It was near the airport. I moved to Corman Suites Apartments and um, it was a very diverse area and um, I was cool. I lived there for about two months before I was robbed at gunpoint. And what happened was I decided to leave out, I think it was probably about maybe 10 at night to run to Dunkin' Donuts and get me a Dunkachino and a bacon, egg, and cheese on a croissant with some jelly on it. And so I went out to get my food. It was late, but not late. 10 is not really that late. It's not like your butt should not be outside going to get some food. So I went to Dunkin' Donuts and I came back. At that time, I was driving a Mercedes C-Class. That was my first car when I graduated high school was my first car my senior year of high school and I went to the Dunkin Donuts came back home and I grew up very sheltered so I was extremely naive and I wasn't I wasn't really aware of my surroundings and just people doing bad things I wasn't really exposed to that even at the age of what that was 23 I think 23 years old so I feel like it was 20, I was 22 years old anyway I hadn't been exposed to just people being negative and mean and I think that's why YouTube comments have hurt me or bothered me at times because I just don't come from an upbringing of people just being malicious and mean and nasty for no reason so I came back home from the Dunkin' Donuts, drove back home, I parked. Um, I saw a shadow of someone walk past the front of my car, but I didn't think too much of it because it was a nice neighborhood. Although, in that part of Philadelphia, um, like I said, it was near the airport, but we were pretty close to other bad parts of Philadelphia. We were pretty close to West Philly, which has a bad section in West Philly. So anyway, I... I got out the car, although I saw the shadow of a person walk past, but I didn't, it was no reason for me to, to think twice about it. So I got out the car, grabbed my keys, grabbed my food, and started to proceed to my apartment door. And right before I got to my door, two guys ran up on me. One guy was in front of me with a gun, and then there was one guy behind me. The guy with the, with the gun was dark skinned, and he was maybe my height, maybe an inch taller, but the guy behind me who was like up on me, like he was like almost, his dick was almost up against my ass, my guy. And um, I don't know why I remember this in this traumatic moment, but the guy behind me was definitely a cutie. 
and he was about maybe six one ish. He was taller, significantly taller than me. And then the one in front of me who had the gun was ugly, my God. And so, um, I. I, I didn't panic. I was very chill and calm. Actually, because of me being so naive of people just being mean, I think I had a tad bit of an attitude that they were robbing me. And so they asked for my money and my cash. And I said, I don't carry cash. I don't have any cash. And then I remember the guy with the gun saying, well, how did you buy your Dunkin' Donuts? And I said, um, how about my bank card? And I know that it's crazy that I would be speaking sarcastically and have an attitude to someone who had a gun in my face, but I don't think it ever crossed my mind that I was actually going to be shot. So, um, when I told him I didn't have cash, the guy behind me asked for my wallet. Well, I can't say he asked. He did ask, but I feel like ask is something that you do to be polite. Um, but he asked for my wallet. I gave him my wallet and he started to go through it. And I thought he was going to take the whole wallet and he said he didn't want it. And so he went through the cards. He saw my ID. He said, here, here's your ID back. I mean, the guy behind me, the cutie, he was being a gentleman. I mean, granted, he was robbing me, but he was being a gentleman. I feel like he was protecting me low key because once he finally made it to my bank cards, I had a TD bank card and a PNC bank card. And once he finally made it to that card, he asked for the pen and I gave him my pen and the guy with the gun, the ugly one, my God, in front of me said, this better be a pen because we're right at your front door and we're going to come back and get you if this is the wrong pen. I said, you have a gun in my face. Why would I give you the wrong pen? Now to his defense of questioning my pen, my pen number is like, a dumb number it's so dumb where it sounds like somebody would make it up because it's like three of the same numbers and only one different number in my four digit pin code so um it was it was it was a it was a weird experience because um when the guy was kind of threatening me because of the pin code the one who had the gun the one behind me the cutie he was pretty much like yo chill chill we got the card let's go so they ran off and I immediately went in my house. Like I ran in my house, went up the stairs. I called the police because I thought that, well, one, I had to call the police because it was a crime and I had a gun in my face. I have, I'd never seen a gun um, in my life in person until that moment. And so I, as I stated, I wasn't really, um, fearful in the moment but it hit me once I got in the house and I was actually realizing like bitch you could have died you could have been killed you could have been shot so like I said I called the police and I, I was trying to let them know you know where I live where I was because at that moment I was safe so I was thinking that they would probably go to the nearest ATM or Mac machine to locate where these people were because me giving them my pen I felt like they would have to go to the closest one because that would have given me time if they took too long for me to cancel the cards. So I called the police first. They were in route. I then called PNC Bank and one of the cards was my Universal Stylist business card. So I called PNC Bank, you know, letting, letting them know that I was robbed at gunpoint. There was a gun in my face. Please cancel my card so they don't take any money. And the PNC rep gave me a hell of a time I got because I told them my account number, I told them my name, told them my business number, but because it was my business, you typically have to have your um, tax ID to give to them because you really can't give your uh, social because your tax ID takes the place of your social um, when it comes to a business account. So I was so frantic at that point and panicking, I could not get the numbers correct for my tax ID number. And the guy on the phone, the representative was so rude. He was just like, well, we can't cancel anything because you can't remember your tax ID. You need to find it, then call us back. And I'm, and I'm saying, sir, I just had a freaking gun in my face. I can't remember. All I'm doing is asking you to cancel the car. I'm not asking for my balance. I'm not asking for any information, but for you to cancel it. I'm thinking from a business standpoint and as a bank, why would you give me that much um, confrontation from only asking you to, to cancel the card? Because once the card is canceled, 
I can't do anything with it. They can't do anything with it. So it, it just didn't make sense to me. So needless to say, the thugs, the robbers, my God, they were able to get $500 from my PNC business account. But thankfully, um, with most banks and with robberies and ATM machines, and all of that, in those kind of circumstances, they're required or their guidelines or regulations um, provide for them to put the money back in your account if you were actually robbed. And the money was taken out from like an ATM machine where there should have been some kind of verification or whatever. But my TD, um, well, I'm saying it was TD, but I think back then the bank was called Commerce. So Commerce, I called them after I called PNC and they were quick on it. I gave them my name, my social, verification, everything. I was robbed at gunpoint, please cancel the car. So they canceled it immediately. And the guys were not able to get anything from my commerce account. Now, that was done. The police arrived. The police arrived and they were very nice. I'm not sure if they were heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual because they were a little bit too comfortable and like, they, was, they were flirting and then you guys know that I have sickening home decor. I've always loved great home decor. So I had like this black and white leather modern sofa. I had beautiful uh, artwork of my hair portfolio on the wall. And they walked in and said, well, who lives here? Um, sir, I called you. I was robbed at gunpoint. I live here. They're like, oh, it's so nice in here. Thank you, sir. But can we handle this police report and complaint? So I ended up having to go with them to the police station, look at some photos of various robbers and thugs and people who had been robbing people in the area, I guess from surveillance footage from other areas. And I um, didn't really recognize anybody from in the photos. Another thing that I do remember that night I was informed when I got to the police station that someone else in my complex, a white guy, was robbed a few minutes before me um, in our complex. And I guess for me, it was just being the wrong place at the wrong time because they had already robbed someone else. So I think they were probably headed to fleeing from where we lived, but I happened to pull up at the wrong time, my God. And my Mercedes, Mercedes has like a panic button on there. And in hindsight, I was thinking, oh, I wish I would have remembered to press my panic button because it would have scared them off. But thankfully I didn't consider that because if that man had a bullet in his gun, I feel like my panic button may have caused him to accidentally pull the trigger, even if it wasn't his intention. So it was only by the grace of God, my God, that I did not think to use my panic button. Now, to make this long story time short, um, I contacted my parents and my mom was just like, my mom and my grandfather and my grandmother was just like, you have to move immediately. I don't care how long you live there. They know where you live and it could be a completely different situation and worse next time. So I ended up contacting the leasing office, had lived there for only two months. I had a housewarming and everything. There was even a cute boy downstairs who I was flirting with and I gave him, you know, some food, was feeding him, my God. I couldn't cook y'all, but I always had food at my house. People always cooked for me. And um, I had to leave him, leave my apartment. I moved my things into storage. I then moved with my grandmother temporarily for a month or two and that's pretty much it. But my parents were frantic. They were like, no, you just cannot stay there. It's not worth it. The leasing office was trying to give me a hard time with breaking the lease, but they could have, I could have somewhat possibly maybe had a lawsuit and sued them because there was no surveillance cameras on the property and we didn't have a gate and, and or anything. So they were somewhat or could have been somewhat liable because of not having the proper security for the complex. But I just wanted to finally give you guys a story time. Uh, I guess my word of wisdom I got from your bishop would be to just make sure you're aware of your surroundings because 
I never thought that something like that would happen to me, but it did. And I am just thankful that I am alive. And yeah, it could have been so much worse. The funny thing is, this is about years later, maybe seven years later, there is a casino in Philadelphia called the Sugar House Casino. And I saw on the news that there were two robbers, my God, just like who robbed me, robbing people at the Sugar House Casino. And it was the exact same guys, seven, five, six, seven years later, the same exact guys. It was the taller, cute guy and the shorter, ugly guy, my God. And they had the same outfits on one. Not, I don't know if it was the same exact outfit, but they, they always wore hoodies. When they robbed me, they had on hoodies. And it was so interesting that seven years later, my life had progressed. I was doing great in the beauty industry. Well, I was doing great when they robbed me as well. But it's just amazing that people don't grow sometimes. Seven years later, they were still... I don't think it was seven years later. It could have been five years. Child, I can't get my timelines right. But it happened and they were still, still robbing people. But anyway, please follow me on all social media outlets. Comment down below and let me know if you guys enjoyed this story time. And I will do more. I think you guys enjoyed it. I will probably do one story time a month and add it to our list of filming and videos and, and topics that we do please subscribe to my channel turn on the notifications share this video and thank you guys for watching bye